Welcome to this webinar series, which is all about the recently published UK guidelines for HIV PEP published in 2021. I'm Dr. Krisha Patel, and I'm a sexual offences examiner working in sexual assault referral centres. So what is PEP? PEP stands for post exposure prophylaxis. Sometimes HIV PEP might be abbreviated as Pepsi, P-E-P-S-E, and that stands for post-exposure prophylaxis following sexual exposure. And it's not to be confused with PrEP, P-R-E-P, which stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis. And we see that being prescribed more frequently now compared to a few years ago. So let's start with some background. A 72 hour window of opportunity exists. Studies show once HIV crosses the mucosal barrier, for example, the virus crossing the barrier between the vagina into the bloodstream after an unprotected sexual intercourse, it may take up to 48 hours before it begins to replicate in the body and up to five days before the virus can be detected in the blood. So there is a 72 hour window of opportunity and starting PEP in this time has been shown to reduce the replication of the virus in the body in animal studies. So PEP must be started in the 72 hour window and ideally as soon as possible, which is why it's really important when considering PEP to first of all document the time of the exposure or the time frame as many people would not remember the exact time an exposure occurred particularly when we're thinking about sexual assault. PEP does not come with any guarantees and someone may of course develop HIV infection even if they started to take PEP straight away after the exposure. So the standard first line PEP regime is a 28 day course of tenofovir disoproxyl 245 milligrams and emtricitabine 200 milligrams which comes as a fixed dose combination and taken once daily as well as raltegravir, 1,200 milligrams once daily. And I've highlighted raltegravir, 1,200 milligrams once daily, because this is a change in the new 2021 guidelines. So this is now simpler for patients as all the tablets can be taken once daily, ideally all at the same time each day to keep the levels of the drug steady. So there may be times when different regimes are suggested, for example, during pregnancy and breastfeeding, if there's renal impairment, if there's a potential drug-drug interaction, or if someone is taking antiretroviral therapy for another reason, such as hepatitis, or if there is evidence that the index case has a current or past history of antiretroviral therapy failure. And in these cases, the healthcare practitioner should really seek expert advice from the HIV or gum specialist. And it's also worth mentioning that there is a separate guideline for children called the CHIVA guideline, and that stands for Child HIV Association Guideline. PEP is effective if it started promptly. So the sooner it started, the better, and it must be started within 72 hours of the exposure. It's effective when adherence to the medication is good. The simplified regime in the 2021 guidelines makes the medications all once daily. And that's a positive step to improve adherence with medications. And adherence is a really big challenge as it's worth remembering that the population who are prescribed PEP frequently are not used to being prescribed medications. So they need lots of encouragement to make sure they take it properly by setting phone alarms, for example. And adherence is needed not just in terms of taking the actual medications every day, but also attending the follow up sexual health appointments and making sure they don't run out of their starter pack, which might just be a three day or five day starter pack. And PEP's effective if the advice is followed about using condoms reliably throughout the treatment period and when waiting for the confirmation HIV test results and by avoiding any potential further high-risk exposures, such as avoiding further unprotected sexual intercourse during the course of PEP, 
And if there has been a further unprotected sexual intercourse, which is high risk in the last two days of the PEP 28 day course, there is some specific guidance to continue the course of PEP for a little bit longer. And for PEP to be maximally effective, it should be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. During normal working hours between nine and five, Monday to Friday, people will usually be able to get emergency PEP from the local genitourinary clinic, the GU clinic, or sometimes GP practices have three or five day starter packs as well. So out of hours, the person may need to go to their local accident and emergency department to get their PEP starter pack, which is the three or five day starter pack. And ideally, they should be fast tracked so they don't have to wait in the waiting room for several hours. And in the sexual assault referral centres where I work, many of the adult services are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So when someone comes in following a sexual assault, they would routinely have a risk assessment completed for HIV. And there are usually three or five day starter packs on site, which we can give out if it's felt to be appropriate. Thank you for listening. And if you found this session useful, then please check out the rest of the series and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.